I've studied Python from a variety of different sources and nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about the input function and how that can expose your program to vulnerabilities. It's insane to me and this has been an incredible revelation. Good morning, it is Thursday and I've had another productive morning just making some coffee, had some breakfast, did my morning routine hung out with my plants as always we know that's a thing in my house and now I'm ready to dive in into the learning process today we're learning all about programming uh, practical programming and concepts and I really hope that I will be able to finish this module and move into Windows judging from how it went yesterday I think I'm going to zoom through Python because I know the foundations of Python and then I think C is going to be something that's new but it's more familiar to me than email protocols um, or other types of protocols stuff that I was learning yesterday so hopefully I will go quicker through this part but I have to say last night before I felt fell asleep I was thinking about email protocols and I was thinking about all the emails in my inbox and how they got there and all the different protocols they had to go through and all that stuff it was it's very interesting to understand how things work how technology works and it's crazy how how we take a lot of this stuff that's super complex for granted because it's just normal everyday stuff but we don't understand how many transactions and communications actually happens behind the scenes. So knowing all of this is super interesting and super helpful for anyone, obviously, who wants to be in cybersecurity, but also for super users of technology in general. I think it's very interesting knowledge. All right, let's dive into today's stuff, into today's work and see how this one goes. I'm 26% through the programming one module and 43% through the course. So let's see how far we can go. Let's do it. Well, this was dumb. I did not realize that the lab has two tabs in it. There's a terminal and a code editor. And I kept on trying to edit the code through the terminal, which worked, but it was you know, a lot of back and forth from the, you know, the Vim editor in the terminal because I'm, I know that stuff now. <laughs> and then running the program, I kept on switching between them and I couldn't find the, uh, the code that the lab was referring to. And I was like, where, where is the code? How do I fix it? How do I find bugs in it if I don't see it? And then I realized that there's a code editor tab and there it was all this time. <laughs> so if you are about to do this course, don't make the same mistake. Make sure that you look through the tabs of the lab because there they are, pretty simple. But I did not see that. But now that I know, it's gonna go even smoother. I just realized that I have a live stream on Instagram coming on in 12 minutes. So I'm going to set up for that. I'm going to do my makeup. Um, I already got my little tripod out, um, pull up the questions for the speaker and we're good. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to pause my studying for that. But after that, I'll be back. The live stream went well. My speakers are always great. So I'm very grateful for that. And I'm back to studying. I'm back to studying 44% through the course. I feel like this morning I wasn't as focused as I, I would have liked because there was a lot, of, a lot of things popping up and I was kind of following up on that. So much for calendar blocking, huh? Or being disciplined about my calendar blocking. But back into studying, let's do this, let's do this. It's time for lunch because I'm hungry and I need to get out of this room. I am getting very claustrophobic, feeling rather claustrophobic. So let's go downstairs, stretch out my limbs. I will need to work out soon or move my body sometime soon as well because I'm getting antsy. But let's continue this. The only problem with... Um, with today, the stuff that I'm doing today is that it's very lab heavy, which means that I can't be stretching as much as when I'm watching videos. So that's the only downside, but it's very interesting. And I love the fact that this material is being presented, even though 
I know most of the stuff. I mean, I'm doing, I'm reading about for loops for Python right now, which I obviously know, but it talks about the, the places where people make mistakes a lot of the times. So very, very insightful from that standpoint. I love that because I never thought about it. I just thought about the for loops and all that stuff, but yeah, that's how you can have vulnerabilities. That's how you can have, um, bugs in your code that can be exploited. So very interesting, very good to know. Let's go have lunch. I continued working for lunch and I realized that, you know, obviously reading and doing labs wasn't very conducive to eating at the same time. So in order to multitask more efficiently, I switched to the next section, which is Windows Foundations, talking about the Windows operating system and all the security considerations when it comes to it, because it's probably, it's the most popular, the most widely spread operating system out there. So it's important to understand the basics there too. And honestly, I used that when I was a child. So it's, it's a nice little reminder, kind of, nostalgic. But yeah, so I switched modules. I'm going through Windows Foundations and it's been very good. There are a bunch of videos, which is nice because I could eat while watching them and learning while watching. And that's how I normally have lunch. So yeah, we're 48% through the course. It's been going slowly today because there's been a lot of reading. And like I said, my morning for some reason was just all over the place. All right, let's continue learning. Let's get that number up. I made a quick break to um, give my plant babies some some love. I haven't watered these probably in a week because these guys like to dry out in the middle. Well, this guy hasn't received water in longer because he doesn't need it. But made a quick break and I'm about to restart the process again because you gotta learn. And I'm almost all the way through the entire Windows module. It was kind of it was kind of quick, but I understand that I have to go back to some modules um, before I, you know, when I'm preparing for the exam and actually do stuff and practice things on a virtual machine. I, it's just a reality. I, if I'm trying to cram it into five days, which I'm not going to be able to finish in five days, but still I'm not able to practice it. So I will go back and honestly, it's just good practice to practice this stuff and understand the differences between the different machines. But it's so interesting how different operating systems obviously have different systems and different considerations and things to be aware about when it comes to security. So yeah, this is interesting. I'm 52% through the course, which is, which feels good. I'm all over a halfway through, but of course this is, there's more to cover. So we'll continue with that once I put all of my babies away. There he is. There you go. Recharged with water energy. This guy's so beautiful. I'm propagating him. Here's what the leaves look like. Look how beautiful it is. All right, we're going back into studying. It is time to go work out and then have dinner and then return back to my working station once again. But yeah, let's go work out. I'm back from dinner, from working out and showering, as you can probably tell. We had a lovely curry for dinner and I broke my five day vegetarian streak. So we had some chicken in there. We're back to working, we're back to studying, and I have decided that I'm going to do something slightly controversial in my methodological, methodical brain. I love doing things in sequence, but I'm going to skip ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the programming two module, and then I'm going to go into, as you can see, I've done 
the Windows Foundation, and then I'm going to jump into the Advanced Computer Hardware module. The reason for it is because tomorrow I want to jump into the security concepts model because I think it's going to be a meaty one and I want to cover it in one of the vlogs this week. And maybe if I have time, offensive security concepts, those are the, the crescendo of this whole program. And while the programming concepts are super useful, I know a lot of the stuff in there, so I will be able to understand the further modules. However, these modules on practical programming and concepts have been incredibly insightful on how you can create vulnerabilities in your code. I've studied Python from a variety of different sources. I did a computer science class uh, when I was working at university. I did a bunch of boot camps and courses that were paid or free, and nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about the input function and how that can expose your program to vulnerabilities. It's insane to me and this has been an incredible revelation. So I'm super happy that this module is there and yes, it takes you through the basics. So if you know these things, it can be repetitive, but honestly, there's some gems sprinkled in there that are so worth going through the basics once again. But I'm going to skip those. As I already said, I'm going to finish this uh, module and we're going to skip to advanced computer hardware for tonight. Let's do this. Well, things have escalated quickly. We are now debugging hardware. I feel like this is, well, this is machine code, I assume, because we're reading values from the CPU, from the registries on CPU, the different types of registries that hold temporary memories. <laughs> and I'm so lost. I really hope that my limited understanding of this is going to be enough for the lab that is coming as the next um, like session, next lesson. What is this? <laughs> What is this? I mean, like now I like I recognize some of these. Thank God I've done the other modules, but this is insane. OK, let's continue. Let's see if I can do the lab. This session literally says <laughs> at the end, if you've been thoroughly traumatized by all of the above, you just want to leave type like a quick command. I really appreciate the kind of humor that is laced th throughout this, throughout this course. Let's see if I can debug this. Well, it says it's going to take 45 minutes, so I'm not going to be able to do this tonight because it is 8.42 already and I should go to sleep soon. But we're 56% through the course, which is good. I don't even know what to expect from this lab. So I'm going to, I'm going to start it, but I know I'm not going to finish it because it's just, it's time for it. Luckily, it looks like I don't need to actually understand all of that gibberish, but we'll see when I'm done with this lab actually tomorrow. But so far it hasn't been that bad. I was just exploring things and getting familiar with those crazy notations. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's going through the, like the granular function by function of what is running through the CPU. It's honestly crazy and it makes me appreciate technology so much. I think everybody should understand more about this because what a wonder you are, what a wonder you are, what a wonder you are that's recording this crazy. But it's time for me to go to sleep because it's 8.51. I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to continue tomorrow. We're going to finish this module and then we're going to move on to the security fundamentals. We're 56% through the course, which is not bad. I honestly think at this point it's not about the quantity of the material that I cover, but it's about the quality, my understanding and all that stuff. And honestly, there's so this is an on-demand course and I can continue coming back to it and I'll have plenty of time to practice all of this and really digest all of this information in time for the exam, which I will talk more about tomorrow and uh, what my strategy will be like and all that stuff slash I don't have a strategy yet, but I will talk about 
my thoughts on that. I'll see you tomorrow.